Good morning, guys. So glad you all can uh, get on your TVs and sit in your living rooms and watch us this morning. And uh, I hope everybody pays close attention. We've got a fun, a fun lesson today, uh, but let's get started with a prayer. Father, we thank you so much for uh, letting us come together today, Lord. We thank you for your word. We thank you for the opportunity to learn your word. We pray that our words today would be your words. And we thank you for the technology you've given us that allows us to do this remotely. And we just pray that you would go with us and that you would bless each and every kiddo out there watching today, Lord. We love you and we praise you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Okay, so we're going to start with our truth cards. What word means God will always keep his promises? Huh? Cole? Cole, what word? Whoops, wrong way. Faithful. Faithful. Okay. Now, can we trust God only sometimes or all the time? Huh? How about Judd this time? Boom! All the time. That's right. Good job. Now, now, what word means God knows and sees everything? Everything we do, everything, Roman. What what word is it? It's a big word, huh? Omniscient. Omniscient. Great job. And then lastly, what did Jesus come to save us from? Huh? What did Jesus come to save us from? Addison. How about you? Huh? That's right. The punishment of sin. The punishment of sin. All right, guys, let's go over our memory verse. You remember it from last week? We're still learning it. It says, trust in the Lord with all your heart. And on the video, it says, trust in the Lord with all your heart. Can you do those motions and say it with me? Trust in the Lord with all your heart. Good. The next part, and do not lean on your own understanding. And the motions for that is, do not lean on your own understanding. Can you do that with me? And do not lean on your own understanding. Good. Next part, in all your ways, acknowledge Him. So it says, in all your ways, acknowledge Him. Can you do that with me? In all your ways, acknowledge Him. Good job. Now for the last part, and He will make straight your paths. So we're just going to make a straight path right out in front of us, okay? So let's do it together. And he will make straight your paths. Good. And that's found in Proverbs 3, 5, and 6. Good job, guys. Here's our video. Proverbs 3, 5, and 6. Trust in the Lord with all your heart and do not lean on your own understanding. Trust in the Lord with all your heart and do not lean on your own understanding.
Okay, Dylan, Amelia, Emma, do you guys remember the twin boys that we talked about last week, what their names were? Esau and Jacob, that's right. They were twin brothers, but they didn't look anything alike. Okay, so Esau means the red hairy one, right? So what does Jacob mean? He was the second one, right? He was the younger brother. His name meant deceiver. That means that he lies and tricks, and that's not right, is it? We're going to learn how he is going to steal the birthright and get twice as much of everything. So do you remember last week when we had the, the um, animals and the servants set up? He's going to get twice as many animals, twice the land, twice the money. Twice of everything is um, going to be that birthright that he's going to get. So if you can see our chart... Esau was hungry, right? He'd been out hunting and he came back and he smelled that soup, that lentil soup that Miss Nicole told you about. And it smelled so good. So what happened? What happened with that bowl of soup, right? He sold his birthright for the bowl of soup. So Jacob got the birthright. Okay, but there was a special blessing that was meant for the oldest son, Esau. Okay, Jacob wanted his father Isaac to give that blessing to him instead of Esau. And Jacob was tricky in getting the birthright uh, from Esau for a bowl of stew. So today we're going to see how Jacob deceived his father through his eyes. Okay, guys, for our object lesson, we're going to be doing a little game with Mr. Dustin. Our eyes are very useful, aren't they? They help us see everything that God created in this world. But what happens when we can't see? What happens if you're blind? You have to rely on your other senses, right? Like smell, taste, hearing, touch. If you can't see, you have to rely on those other things. So we are gonna do an experiment this morning. Mr. Dustin is blindfolded and I'm gonna give him some objects to try to guess what it is. And he, can, he can't use his eyes. He has to rely on his other senses, okay? So, First, we're going to give him this, if you guys can see this. All right, so Dustin, you can touch it, you can shake it, you can hold it, whatever you need to do. You just can't look at it. Hmm. Feels like there's ribs in it. There's a handle. Kind of feels like a baseball. But no, it's got this big pokey thing. You know, it kind of feels like a pumpkin. <laughs> Guys, did he get it? That's right, it's a pumpkin. Good. Okay, let's give him another one. This one will be a little bit harder since he can't since he can't see what this is. Okay. What do you think this is, Dustin? Hmm. It's paper. Oh. It's Oh my. One of my <laughs> Well, I'm not. He's sure relying heavily on taste, isn't he? Mm-hmm. That's a bowl of chicken noodle soup. Aslan, is that right? That's a bowl of chicken noodle soup. No, it's a bag of Dorito chips. Oh. Okay, we're going to try one more. Mmm. Now this, huh? Roman Grayson, can you Let's guys see. give him a hint at home? That's a. Uh, it almost feels like a fruit of some kind, because it's kind of. I don't know. That's mm. disgusting. That's a lemon. <laughs> That's a lemon. That's right, Dustin, that was a lemon. Way to use your taste buds. Okay, slightly gross, but okay. Do you think it was harder to figure out what you were holding when you couldn't see it? Yeah, it was pretty, <laughs> <clears throat> it was a lot harder. All right, in our lesson today, Isaac was very old and his eyes had gone blind. And we're gonna find out how Jacob and Rebecca tricked him because he was blind. Okay guys, so it had been a while since Jacob had um, sold 
uh, Esau is sold to Jacob his birthright for a bowl of stew. Do you guys remember that story? So now we're moving on and Isaac is ready to bless his son and he's going to bless his oldest son. He wants to bless Esau. Isaac was old and his eyes were dim so he couldn't even see. And he says, my son, he said, behold, I'm old. I don't know the day of my death. Now take your weapons and go out and hunt and get me, make my favorite food and come back here and I will bless you. So Esau goes off, but Rebecca, she's listening. She's listening from in the tent. You can hear that Esau's going to get the blessing, but she knows God wants Jacob to have the blessing and be the leader. So Rebecca goes and she talks to um, Jacob and says, here's what I want you to do. I want you to go put on Esau's clothes and we're going to put goat skins on your arms and you're going to go into your father because he's old and blind and can't see. And we're going to trick him and get that birthright because God wants you to get it. So Jacob said, but he's hairy. He's going to, I'm going to get cursed instead. He's like, no, no. Let's see. Look right here. What do we see on his hands? He's going to put this hairy goat hair on his arms and on his neck. Do you see up here? And so he could trick his father. So he went to his father and said, My father. And he said, Here I am. Who are you, my son? And Jacob said to his father, I am Esau, your firstborn. I have done to you as you told me. Now sit up and eat this game that your soul that your soul may bless me. So did what did Jacob do? Did he do the right thing? Well, he was obeying his mom. Yes, he deceived his father and he did the wrong thing, right? He tricked his father and his father actually believed him. And he said, oh, Esau, my son. And he gave him the whole blessing. And back then they would give them things like land and animals and money. And he gave the full blessing to, the, to Jacob. Now God wanted to do that anyway. So did Rebecca and Jacob do the right thing? Because they were like following God. They did it their own way, right? They did not follow God in his timing. And we'll see that it turns out that that can break up the family and causes some bad consequences. So while Jacob was being blessed, Esau was out hunting for meat to cook for his father. Just after Jacob left Isaac's tent, Esau came in with his food so he could get the blessing. But it didn't take long for Esau to figure out what Jacob had done. Isaac told Esau it was too late by then. He had already blessed Jacob, and now Jacob was going to be the leader over Esau. How do you think Esau felt about that? Huh? How do you think? Well, the Bible says Esau cried out with a great and bitter cry. He was super angry. Listen and tell me what Esau planned to do to Jacob, okay? Listen closely. In Genesis 27, 41, Now, Esau hated Jacob because of the blessing with which his father had blessed him. And Esau said to himself, The days of mourning for my father are approaching. Then I will kill my brother Jacob. So how did Esau feel about Jacob? Yeah, you're right. He hated him. And what did he say he was going to do to Jacob? Right, right again, guys. Good job. Way to pay attention. He wanted to kill him. He wanted to kill Jacob. So... Esau hated Jacob because he took his birthright and his blessing. He stole it for himself. He was so mad that he said he would kill Jacob. When Rebekah heard about this, she told Jacob to get out of there quickly and go to her brother's house a long ways away where he would be safe from Esau's anger. Okay, so let's think for just a second here. Let's think about the consequences of what Jacob and his mother had done. When they tried to do things their way, it led to sin. And they ended up making a mess of things, didn't they? They made a great big mess of the whole thing. Now, Jacob's relationship with his brother was ruined, totally ruined from then on, and Rebecca had to send Jacob away. She thought it would only be for a few days, but we'll see later on that she actually lost Jacob for many, many years. We may not like to wait, just like Rebecca and Jacob didn't like waiting. But it's always best to wait for God's timing. When we try to do things our own way, it can lead to sin. Isaac 
was very old and his eyes had gone blind. He thought he was going to die soon, so he called for his oldest son, Esau, because he wanted to bless him. Esau, go hunting and make my favorite food for me to eat. Then I will bless you. Yes, father, I will go right now. God had already told Rebekah that the younger son would be the leader someday. But instead of waiting for God, Rebekah decided to do things her way. She and Jacob planned to trick Isaac into giving Jacob the blessing. I will make the food and you will take it to him then he will bless you. But Esau is hairy, and my skin is smooth. Do what I say, and bring me two young goats. So Rebekah cooked Isaac's favorite meat and put on goat skins on Jacob's hands and neck. Jacob also wore some of Esau's clothes, so he would, he would even smell like Esau. Then Jacob went to Isaac's tent. Isaac, who could not see who came into his tent, so he asked who was there. Who are you? I am Esau. Isaac wasn't sure if this was really Esau, because his voice sounded like Jacob's. Come here so I may touch you. Isaac felt Jacob's hands, and they felt hairy because of the goat skins Jacob was wearing. That's my hairy boy. Give me the food. Come here so I can bless you. After Jacob tricked Isaac and got the blessing, he left the tent. Isaac was already full from eating all that great food Jacob brought, but then he had another visitor. You might bless me. Isaac was so surprised to have someone else come in. He asked who it was. Who are you? I am Esau. What? I already blessed you. Then they both figured out Jacob had tricked them. Esau was so angry at Jacob. He said he was going to kill him someday soon. So Jacob had to flee and run far from his uncle to his uncle's home far away. Ah!